everybody. Today we're going to be talking about a rectifier and how when we add a capacitor to it, how it actually affects it, how we calculate that voltage, and how the current will flow from the source to the load during that. So let's take a look. So here we have our basic rectifier circuit. And this is just using a single diode, so it's a halfway rectifier. And we've added a capacitor labeled C at the output. And we talked about how adding a capacitor smooths out the output, but how exactly does it do it and how would we calculate it? So we have an AC waveform on VN and at the beginning it's going to follow that VN up to the maximum point shown here and then we're going to see the effect of the capacitor. So when it's flowing from say zero up to that maximum point, current is at that time going to be flowing through the diode, through the capacitor, and through the resistor. So we have two current paths there. But what happens once we go past that point? Okay, let's look at a, let's zoom in after that peak point. So we assume we're going to peak at this point right here. And after that, then the capacitor and the resistor are going to work together. So let's look at that a little bit more. So here, now we've hit this peak point, and I'm showing it in the graph on the right. So we have this peak point, and now the input voltage is going to start going down. And so this graph here is VI, it's a cosine, so that voltage is going to start going down. But the voltage of the output, V out, is actually going to stay higher. And that's because the capacitor is storing charge. So during that time, right after this point, so we're going to call this T0 for our purposes today, after this maximum point, V in will start to decrease, but actually the charge at the V out, the capacitor is going to be higher than that. So in that case, after that moment, the voltage on the right side of the diode is actually going to be a higher voltage than the other side so we're not going to have any current flow it's reverse bias so then we have no current flow so there's going to be no current flow coming from the input to the output load what we'll be left with is the current will come from the capacitor because there is charge stored in the capacitor so that charge is going to go through the output resistor in this direction those of you familiar with electric circuits will see this as an RC circuit. So let's look at just the RC circuit part a little bit more. Here's the just the RC circuit. So if you go back to basic circuits, and if you're not familiar with this, go look it up. Um, you can find the equations for this and how to analyze it. And of course, I'm just going to show the current path again. It's going to be going in this direction. And we will start from some starting voltage. So here I'm just going to stay um, we're going to call it V. So we're going to start at some voltage and what's going to happen is we're going to have an exponential decay. So we're going to have a exponential decay. It's going to go towards zero but it'll never really hit zero because it's going just exponentially towards zero. So how do we model that mathematically? We use an exponential. So we can say that it's going to be uh, the V. So I'm going to say V out and this is over time, that is going to be equal to the starting voltage and then we're going to have an exponent and we're going to have a negative, it's a decaying, so it's a negative, decaying over time, so we have a T and you will have a 1 over tau where tau is RC. Okay, and RC are just the values of the capacitor and the resistor, so you can calculate those and get that value, plug it into here. And another thing we can do is this voltage, because our input is actually an AC signal, we know that we're going to take the RMS value of our input AC signal and multiply that by root 2 because we want to get the peak value of this sign. So if I go back real quick. If the RMS value here is Vs for the source, then this maximum point here is going to be Vs root 2. So we can, for our specific equation, we can say, so V out here, T, 
is going to be equal to this Vs times a root 2, and the Vs is the RMS value of the AC input. And then we have e to the negative t and divided by rc. So that is the equation for this rc circuit after it reaches its peak value. It's going to go down in this way. So if we have a really large r, which means that the current going through the resistor would be a little bit lower for the same voltage, or we have a little really large capacitor, so it's storing more energy, so the current coming out of it would kind of, it would decay more slowly. So if we have a large tau, we're gonna get a slower decay. So from the same point, I'm going to attempt to draw something like this. We would get a slower decay. It still would eventually go down to zero. I apologize for my drawing, lack of drawing skills. It would decay more slowly. However, if we have a very small R or C value, the capacitor can't store as much charge if it's a smaller capacitance, or if it's a smaller R, it means that the, current is gonna, the current's gonna go through at a higher pace, and so we're gonna deplete the capacitor more quickly. So that would have a lower tau value, and we would see it go by a little bit faster. Okay, something like that. Okay, so depending on that value, it's going to affect how quickly it discharges. All right, so let's look back at this waveform. So after we hit this peak value here, and again, remember that value is going to be the root 2 times the RMS value of the input. So this is Vs, and remember that's RMS. Then Instead of following the input voltage down to the negative, we're just going to let the RC circuit take the lead and control the output voltage. So it's going to look something like this, some sort of exponential decay. I'm going to draw it all the way out here. And it's going to continue to decay from this peak point until it hits the sine wave again. So we need to look and see when the exponential decaying function and the sine wave intersect. So once we hit this intersection point, then we're gonna see that the input voltage is gonna be again higher than the output voltage. So we're gonna have forward bias of the diode and current's gonna flow again through the diode. So we'll get flow back through our from the input side to both the capacitor and the resistor. So during that time, it's gonna follow again this AC waveform up to its maximum point here. Then again, once we hit this peak point, we're going to follow the same equation and have the exponential decay. I do wanna point out one thing that actually in this region when it's just starting to decay, your equations, your actually input voltage may be a little bit higher than your exponential, but just for simplicity, we're gonna ignore that that happens and we're gonna assume that it transitions to the RC circuit exactly at the peak value. So you can simplify that and make your life a lot easier. Then you can calculate this intersection point and that will also be your minimum at your output voltage and then your maximum voltage will be the peak voltage. Another thing to note is that the current is only flowing from the source to the load when it's this green section. So instead of a continuously flowing current, all the current has to flow during that period where the input voltage is higher than the output, essentially recharging up that capacitor and so you actually can get very large current spikes, which can be part of the problem in designing these. So you may think, oh, it's always better to have the largest capacitor possible. But if that were the case, you would have a very large capacitor, barely goes down, but then you would only have a very short period here for all of the current that you need to supply to the load to go into that capacitor. So you can actually have huge current spikes from your AC source, which can cause problems on the AC side. So you have to think about the voltage ripple that you actually want in your output voltage, what's acceptable, 
and the inrush current, the amount of current that your system can take um, from the source to refill that capacitor each time. So to summarize, when we have a capacitor added, whenever the input voltage is greater than the capacitor, we're going to have current flowing through the diode, like this green path here. And whenever the voltage, input voltage becomes lower than the capacitor voltage, it becomes an RC circuit and it's going to be governed by this equation, which is a standard equation for an RC exponential decay on the voltage. And you can use these equations to figure out the intersection point and determine the minimum voltage you're going to see on the output voltage and then how, where the current is actually going to flow in your circuit from the source side to the load side.